Um, let me start off by saying good morning and happy World Tai Chi Day, um, one of my absolute favorite holidays. Um, I know officially World Tai Chi Day will not be celebrated until May 30th due to current COVID and coronavirus standards. Um, however, it's still asked that everyone that planned to participate go ahead and participate today. Uh, we do want to start here in just a couple of seconds because the point of World Tai Chi Day, let me back up, the motto of World Tai Chi Day is one world, one breath. Basically meaning that everyone that practices meditation, Qi Kong, Tai Chi, um, any of those kind of disciplines are all practicing together at 10 a.m. in whatever their local time zone does. What that does is essentially build a wave of positive energy that goes across the entire earth. Um, and as every time zone hits 10 a.m., the practitioners begin to practice. That adds to and builds on that wave of goodness that we have going around. So that is going to be our intention here, is to help um, build that wave of positive energy. I think the world needs it as much now as it ever has, so we want to make sure that we are doing this together. So again, the motto of World Tai Chi Day is one world, one breath. So we are going to start off by breathing together. When we do anything in Tai Chi, we want to do so from a grounded position. I'm also going to say really quickly, I'm going to suggest modifications to you. So if you want to follow along from a seated position, you're hopefully able to do so. I will also very briefly mention that um, because of the camera and I'm using my phone and everything, I am going to essentially um, mirror what I'm asking you to do. For example, if I tell you to put your left arm up, I mean your left arm while my right arm goes up. Um, so if I tell you shift your weight over to the left, make sure it's your left and not my left. If we get a little bit off, not a big deal. Anyway, so back to being grounded. So we have our feet firmly on the ground. The weight is evenly over, or the weight is evenly centered through the center of the feet, and the feet are firmly attached to the ground. The spine is straight, the head is lifting the body, we have the tailbone gently tucked underneath and we're light on the legs. Just as a quick side view, that's the difference between standing like this and gently tucking that tailbone underneath. As soon as I do so, plums up the spine and helps facilitate that ground. I also want to make sure that you're open and rounded through the arms. We don't want to cut off the flow of chi. If the arms are down like this, we've restricted that flow. So open and round so our life energy, our chi can move throughout the body. So when we do this breathing, we are going to gently pull the stomach in on the inhale at hang, and we're going to let it relax back out and exhale at ha. So we're going to modify the breathing a little bit. We're going to take three breaths all together. Then after those three breaths, as we inhale, the arms are going to float up in front of us. As we exhale, we'll drop the weight down through the feet, bend over, and raise as we inhale. If you're in a seated position, as we in, excuse me, as we inhale, I'm going to ask you to turn your head to the left. Exhale, the head's going to go back to center. On the next inhale, you'll turn and look to the right, head back to center. After we do about six of those, as we inhale, the arms are going to float up in front of us. As we exhale, your left arm is going to go up as though pressing on heaven while the right arm presses down on earth. Then we will have the arms cross in front again. And as we exhale, one arm will come up like so. So we'll make this nice, gentle, and relaxed. So all together with those, with those nice breaths then, we'll start. Hang, inhale and ha, exhale, hang, inhale, pull the stomach in, ha, let it relax back out, hang, ha, and hang, inhale, the arms raise up, and ha, we exhale, drop the weight through the feet, and bend, then hang, raising nice and gently, from the feet, ha, hang, ha, hang, ha. Ah. 
allow the arms to cross in front and ha. As we exhale, your left arm goes up while your right arm goes down. Hang. We inhale, arms cross and ha. As we exhale, your right arm goes up, your left arm down. Hang. Inhale, arms cross and ha. Left arm up. Hang. Ah. Hang. Ha. Ah. Hang. Ha. Ah. Hang. Ha. Ah. Hang. One more of those on each side. Hang. Ha. Hang. Ha. Now the arms float out to the sides. Hang. And ha. They relax open as you exhale. Hang. The arms cross in front. And ha. Relax together. Hang. Keep the arm wrist together. Flip them through. And ha. Very nice. That was one cycle of the simplified breathing. Now, as I'm famous for saying in all my classes, we're going to do that exact same thing again. What I would like you to do, though, is relax into it a little bit. If you're standing, when we get to the part where the arms cross in front and one arm goes up and the other arm goes down, if you notice, I am gently shifting my weight back and forth. So whichever arm is up, I am weighted on the other side. It's because of the crossover of the central nervous system and unifying the body to work together. So I want you to soften as you do this so you can find that weight shift for yourself as we do this. So starting again, doing the exact same thing, but being a little bit more relaxed into it. Hang, inhale, pull the stomach in, and ha. Hang, ha. Float up in front and ha. Drop the weight through the feet before bending over. Hang. Ha. Remembering if you're joining us from that seated position, hang. You're simply looking to the left, ha, and to the right as you do this. Hang. Ha. Hang. Ha. Hang. Ha. Last time for now. Hang. Arms cross in front and ha. As you exhale, your left arm goes up while your weight shifts to the right. And hang. Ha. This time, the right arm is up, so the weight's on the left. Hang. Ha. Left arm up, weighted on the right. Hang, ha, hang, ha, hang, ha, hang, ha. Hey.
more time on each side. Hang. Ha. Hang. Ha. Hang. Arms out to the sides. Ha. Hang. Inhales, arm cross in front. Ha. Hang, keep the wrist together, and ha. Good. So now that I've hopefully gotten you a little bit more relaxed and at least somewhat used to the breathing, we're going to go ahead and do the entire breathing sequence as taught by my ultimate teacher, Master Joe Soon Wa. If you're one of my students, you're familiar with this. If you're not, I'm simply going to ask that you follow along as best you can. Keep yourself nice and relaxed and remember to gently draw the stomach in as you inhale on hang and let it relax back out at ha. So again, I'm making sure we're doing this from a nice grounded position. The beginning is gonna seem very familiar to you. So we'll start, hang, the arms float up, and ha, hang, ha, hang, ha, the hands raise up in front, hang, ha, we're going to scrunch in on the next inhale, so hang, draw in, and ha, Stretch up, ha, hang, ha, hands are crossed in front, hang, turn and look to your right, and, or excuse me, your left, and ha, hang, now you're looking to your right, ha, Hang, again looking left, ha, hang, inhale and look to the right, ha, hang, ha, hang, ha. You're seated, keep going with those. Hang, otherwise hands float up in front, and ha, we bend over. Hang, nice and gently raising from the feet, and ha. Hang, ha. cross in front, ha, exhale, left arm up, weights on the right, hang, ha, hang, ha, hang, ha, Float out to the sides. Ha. Hang. Ha. Hang. Ha. Well, I don't know about you all, but I know I feel much better just from having done that and. No matter how many times I do it by myself, it's always nice when I do it with other people, even if it's done virtually. 
So thank you very much for participating in that breathing exercise with me and truly exemplifying the motto of World Tai Chi Day, one world, one breath. So the next thing I would like to do is start working with a little bit of our chi movement and our chi flow throughout our body in addition to some general bending and stretching, a little bit more opening. Uh, so with this, we wanna make sure we stay grounded. And I also need to briefly explain what in the world a Dan Tien is. So your chi, your body's personal energy is flowing around your body. When it's not following those energetic meridians and pathways, it is stored in the body in one of three locations. This is all according to traditional Chinese medicine. Those three locations are the three Danteans, lower Dantean, mid Dantean, and upper Dantean. Our intents and purposes is going to be to work with the lower Dantean, which is about two finger widths below your navel and about three inside. I want you to imagine your Dantean as a ball of swirling, twirling, glowing energy in whatever your favorite color happens to be that's fairly accurate to what it actually is. Um, so we're going to use some imagination, some visualization to see if we can get this chi moving and flowing around the body. So now you know what the Dantean is, so um, that's the important part. Once again, come to a nice grounded position. Just check in with the body, make sure you're still light on the legs, you have not locked them, your shoulders are draped down, the head is really suspending the body, and again, the weight is evenly over the feet. We're not rocked back on the heels or forward on the toes. Good. So we're going to go ahead, let the arms float up in front of us. The palms are going to rotate overhead, and we are gently going to bring the arms down to the sides. So again, nice and gently, the arms are going to rotate up, palms overhead, and then they float to the sides. So here, I want you to imagine that she is spreading from the Dantean and spreading to fill the whole body, and then it's gently returning back to it. So as the arms raise, you want this feeling of that internal stretch, chi fills the body, and then it closes back to it. So again, chi is spreading to feel the whole body here. You might notice a buzzing, tingly sensation starting, and you might not. We'll do that a few more times, keeping it nice and relaxed really focusing on that nice internal stretch. Good. One more time, just like that. Very nice. From here, we're going to do the exact opposite of what we just did. So making sure we feel nice and grounded again. And by exact opposite, I meant exact opposite physical motion. So this time, the arms are going to sweep out to the sides, and then the hands come softly down the center of the chest. So right away, getting the chi flow involved. So here, that chi spreads to fill the whole body. As you bring your hands back, consciously return that chi to the Dantean. Good. And again, she is spreading to fill the body and returning back to the Dantean. So feel this nice internal stretch and that gentle return. Good. Do a few more of those, keeping this nice and relaxed, making sure that the shoulders stay draped down and also making sure that all parts of the feet remain in contact with the floor. Good. Do one last one, just like that. Very nice. So now that we are a little bit more comfortable with those motions and have probably opened up the shoulders a little bit, we're going to do um, very similar, but just build on a little bit. So again, nice, relaxed, grounded with the shoulders open and rounded. Once again, we're going to let the palms float up in front of us. 
This time, as the hands come up overhead, we're going to gently interlace the fingers, bend gently to your left, back to center, go to the right, center, and then let the hands come down, and they separate. Good. And again, sweeping the hands up, as the palms rotate overhead, we'll gently interlace the fingers, bend very gently to the left, center, and right, back to center, and down. Good. We're going to do that a few more times, so up, fingers gently interlace, bend gently to the left, center, right, center, and release. We're going to do this three more times all together, keeping it nice and gentle, making sure that we don't bend too far in either direction. Good. And again. Going to do one last one just like that. Nice and relaxed. Very good. So now we're going to take the motion where we sweep the arms out to the sides and build on that just a little bit. This is where we're really going to see if I can mirror my left from my right. So what we want to do is sweep the arms out to the sides. When they're overhead, I want you all to turn to your right. Let your left arm come to the front, the other arm to the back, and back to center. Good. So again, the arms are going to raise out to the sides. This time, you're turning to your left with the right arm in front, left arm to the back. The arms fall and back to center. Good. Nice and gently with that. This time, turning to your right, back to center. And again. And center. Good. We're going to keep these nice and relaxed. I also want you to pay attention to any discomfort, maybe any snaps, cracks, pops, anything like that that's going on on the inside. That is showing us areas where the body needs a little bit more attention, a little bit more opening, and probably a lot more relaxation. going to do one more of these on each side and then I'll give you the option for a small break so feel that nice opening back to center and one last one turning to your left and back to center good as you need to go ahead step out shake it out if your arms are hurting make whatever adjustments you need to do if you need a break, if you're standing and you need a break, now is the time to sit down for just a second while we briefly go over the Chinese cultural facial massages, simply because I think this is such an important part of Tai Chi, um, energy healing, and I don't really differentiate the two. So what we're going to do is rub the face vigorously. This is designed to stimulate the area that is being rubbed and by stimulating it with the rubs, we are bringing increased blood flow there, which brings more oxygen. It also brings more chi to that area, and chi is incredibly healing. And bonus, it also brings collagen to the area being massaged, so this can help reduce wrinkles. I know, none of you care about the oxygen, you all care about the reduction of wrinkles. Whatever works. So what we're going to do is rub the hands together to accumulate that healing chi energy between the palms. This is where your intention really comes in and starts to, to matter. So really rub those hands together, trying to build the sensation of warmth right in the center. All of these rubs are going to be done in sets of 36, since three is a sacred number to the Chinese. However, before we 
rub our face, um, starting in an up and down vigorous motion, the first thing we're going to do is take this chi energy, cup the hands over the eyes, and take this healing chi energy, especially to the backs of the eyes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Allow them to feel as though they have a very nice, warm blanket wrapped around them. And just take this opportunity to really thank them for all their hard work. Maybe even take your next breath in to the eyes. Once that warm energy is dissipated, we rub our face in an up and down motion, counting to ourselves 36 times. Once we have rubbed our face up and down like that, the next thing we're going to do is rub around the ears. You can rub on your ears, behind your ears, in front of your ears. Really listen to your body and tell you what, listen to what it tells you it needs and wants as you do this. Once we have rubbed around the ears, the next thing is going to be a pull down motion along the sides of the nose. Again, we are only pulling down here. We are not pushing back up. Same 36 times. After we've pulled on down along the sides of the nose, the next thing we're going to do is rub back and forth along the jawline. But we want this to be a nice, relaxed jawline. So unclench your teeth and back and forth again 36 times. Ha, ah, it feels so much better. And last part of the facial massage or the section is going to be the third or thyroid area. So four fingers on one side of the throat, thumb on the other and up and down again 36 times. You want to do half of these rubs with one hand and half with the other. You also want to take care to make sure you keep the head top flat and do not extend it or lift the neck. Good. As last thing we need to do as part of the facial massage where everything is done 36 times is a lower back massage and we're going to do it 49 times. Deborah, this is for you. So we start with the hands in the weight up near the waist in a V shape, rub down towards the tailbone with the palms. We can also use the backs of the hands like this. You can also use the thumbs like that. If you have difficulty reaching your back, you can also use your intention or your imagination. These rubs and any massages that I show you are made to be done as often as it occurs to you. Figure out a way to incorporate it into your daily practice and use that for yourself. For example, if you spend a lot of time at a computer or something like that, that lower back massage can be very helpful at any point in time. Okay, so if you did sit down and take a brief break, I'm going to ask you go ahead, get back up. If you've been seated, seated, excuse me, go ahead and remain so. So now what we're really going to try to do is see, activate that chi flow as best we can. Uh, keep in mind, if you're one of my experienced students, you're not going to have too much trouble with this. If you're more inclined to feeling energy flow, it's going to be easier. However, many of us do not have that luxury. If this is one of your first classes with me, don't worry if you don't feel your chi. When I first started, I didn't either. Um, so just kind of go with it the best you can. If you want to visualize and imagine it, that's going to make it easier because the more we visualize things, the more it actually happens. Typically speaking, in very general terms, chi is going to flow up the back and down the front of the body. So up the back and up the spine, around and down the front. You remember where your Dante N is. So chi is essentially there's an energetic pathway that means that chi drops straight down. Then it's going to come together, come up this way, all the way up the spine, split, come back, and return to the Dante N. So we're going to imagine that pathway as we add in this physical movement. So take a second, make sure you feel nice and grounded. 
Again, the head top is straight, the spine is straight, the head top is lifting the body, the legs are loose, and the weight is evenly over the feet, arms are rounded. We are going to go ahead, let the arms float up in front of us with the wrists leading the way. When they're roughly shoulder height, they extend, then they come back and sink back down. So again, the arms float up in front, they extend when they're at roughly shoulder height, back and down. Good. A few more times, just kind of feeling this motion trying to make it one smooth motion and not stopping as the arms extend. We want this to be a continuous movement. Got it. Now we're going to get the chi involved. So imagine that chi is being pulled up the back as your hands raise, goes over the head, fills the arms as they extend, is brought back, and then return to the dantian as the hands sink. So again, bring that chi energy up your back and over your head. Let it fill the arms, bring it back, and back down. And again, good. As we do it this time, I'm going to have you break the rules and pause here with your arms outstended. Imagine that chi energy is coming out of your palms. Good. And then go ahead, bring it back and down. If you felt your feet sink more firmly into the floor as you did that, that's because you've unified the whole body together. So just a couple more times like that with that chi flow, up over the head, fills the arms, bring it back and back down. One last time like that, nice, relaxed, and gentle. Very good. Uh, next thing we're going to do is a little bit of a chi building exercise to see if we can uh, get the sensation of chi built between the hands in this case. So what I would like you to do, again, nice and grounded, is have the arms float up in front, keep the shoulders draped down, the palms are facing one another, and then I want you to separate the hands and bring them back together. Separate the hands, bring them back together. Going to keep doing this a few more times, nice and slowly. Pay attention to any sensations going on, especially in your palms. You will want to feel as though you're compressing air between the palms. You might also feel as though they're magnets repulsing one another. You might notice as you separate your hands that it almost feels like there's a string keeping the palms connected right in the center of the palms. If you don't feel any of that, that's perfectly fine and normal. Next time the hands are together, I want you to take this ball that we've built and just kind of define it. See if you can give it a little bit of a size, maybe add a little bit of weight to it. And again, if you added that weight and felt your feet really sink into the ground, that's because you're unifying the whole body and it's starting to work together, which is exactly what we want in Tai Chi. Good. So hopefully you all have built this ball just that little bit. If you notice the arms are going around the ball. One of them is dropping down as the other one raises. Good. What I want you to do is hold that ball with your hands facing one another Go ahead, carry that ball to your left. Let your right or your left shoulder drop down so that your right arm is on the top. You've turned to the side with this. And then back to center, and then turn to your right, letting your right arm drop down and your left arm is on top. And then we're gonna go back to center and carrying this ball over to your left. Try to keep the hands an equal distance apart and really feel this ball that you have built. As you're carrying this, it's a good bet that you're also instinctively shifting your weight from one side to the other. So now when this ball is on your left, you might notice you're weighted on the right. As you're in the middle, your weight's double centered, but when the ball is firmly on your right, then the weight is on the left. 
So really loosen up and relax into that. Get the entire body involved from the feet to that rooted, grounded head top involved with carrying this ball back and forth. Really relax into this. Gonna carry that ball one more time in both directions. So when that ball is on the left, return to center and go ahead and gently release that. Again, if you feel any kind of buzzing, tingling, um, pins and needles, creepy crawly sensations in your palms, likely what you're feeling is your chi moving. Um, if you're not feeling that, not a problem. So the next exercise that I would like to do with you all is called a, would say, moving and standing meditation, and it's called holding a jug or holding a cauldron. And I'm also going to go ahead and introduce a new stance to you. We're gonna keep it nice and grounded, but we're going to step out of what we call horse riding stance. This is that grounded stance that we've been in until this point. So what I would like you to do, and if you're in a seated position, don't worry about this. If you're standing, however, what I'd like you to do is shift all of the weight over to your left side. Then I want you to pick your right foot up and bring it directly forward of where it is now and adjust the back foot so it's at a 45 degree angle. Make sure you do not bring that other foot over like that and put your ankles on the same plane. At that point, you have no structural stability. Just a quick view from the side. I have this nice separation between my feet. I've got my back foot at a 45. My front foot is facing straight. My spine is straight. My head is lifting my body and my tailbone is tucked. I do not have my tailbone out. And I'm also going to take care when I'm doing this back and forth motion that my waist is staying at an even level. If I have them too far forward, I immediately drop down. That's a sign that you need to narrow your stance a little bit so that the waist stays even when we're moving straight back and forth. We also want to avoid leaning too far forward or leaning too far back. So now you know what not to do. So this is gonna be a very gentle movement. So hopefully I have talked long enough that you have yourself settled and grounded in bow and arrow stance with your right foot forward. Make sure that tailbone stays tucked underneath I want you to put your weight on the back leg and then let your arms float up in front again and make a nice round, um, have your arms nice and round. So the exercise before was primarily concentrating the chi in the palms. This one is going to activate the entire arms. So what I want you to do is imagine or visualize a heavy cauldron being placed in your arms. Again, if you felt your feet kind of sink down, you more firmly grounded, and that's exactly what we want. So we want to hold this cauldron and make sure we don't drop it. We're not going to tense up though, nice and gently. And we are simply going to go from the back foot, front, and back, and then front, back, front, back, front. I want you to make sure that these movements are really originating from the feet. Don't get in the habit of letting your hips make these movements. Everything originates from the feet and it's nice and grounded as you go back and forth. And just like you were doing on the other side, do please pay attention to see if you feel any buzzing, tingling, or creepy crawly sensations going on in the arms. I'm just gonna do that a couple more times. Next time we're on the back foot, I want you to go ahead and release that cauldron. 
then step back. Take just a second here. Make sure you feel nice and grounded in horse riding stance. So this should be somewhat familiar to you. Good. Now what I want you all to do is shift your weight over to your right. Pick your left foot up and bring it directly forward of where you are. And then adjust that back foot so it's at that 45 degree angle. And then again, we are going to let the arms come up in front of us. And imagine, visualize that nice heavy cauldron being placed inside of them. Make sure you are grounded here. And then starting from the back foot, we're going to shift the weight front, back, front, back, front, back. I'm going to briefly turn to the side just to give you another view. And again, make sure you stay in structure here. These movements are small. This is a very small meditation. Just simply shifting the weight back and forth. Make sure the shoulders stay draped down and that the head is still lifting the body. Good. Hopefully we're feeling a little bit of that buzzy, tingling sensation in the arms, which again is your chi. So what we're going to do is when we are on this back foot, hold on to the cauldron. I want you to go ahead and step back and then bring your arms down to your lower abdomen. Consciously think about returning this energy that you've built in the arms to the lower Dante end. So just kind of imagine you've built that energy and you are reinvesting or giving it back to yourself by placing it in that lower Dante end. Your body's going to know what to do with it from there. Good. Go ahead. Relax out of that if you need to. Kind of step it out. So just a couple more things, um, we're actually going to go back and do the hold a cauldron or hold a jug meditation again, but this time we're going to keep it in horse riding stance. Um, I want to really show you how, um, how you can really take this one thing and make it your own. This one simple meditation which connects the whole body, starts to activate everything and really get you in touch with it, how you can uh, use this meditation to make it your own. So what we're going to do, again, is let the arms float up in front of us, nice and rounded, while we are grounded, keep the shoulders straight down, and again, imagine that cauldron is being placed back in your arms. So really feel that, and allow it to let you sink down and be grounded. And then what we're going to do is shift the weight over to the right, and then over to the left, over to the right, and left right, left. Notice these are small movements and that I'm really using my feet to help originate them. I am not using my waist or my hips. All these movements are really coming from the grounded feet. Make sure you are doing the same. You'll also notice these weight shifts seem really small. What I'd like us to do now is to relax into this a little bit. Begin to let the upper body go. Start to allow yourself to twist as you're shifting the weight. So once again, you will find that whichever side you are weighted on, your arms are moving in the other direction. So if you're on the right, your arms are to the left and vice versa. Really relax into this. Allow the whole body to sink down and work together. Really feel how the feet are pressing into the ground and getting involved in this. Feel that 
nice turning and opening from the waist. Maybe take it a little bit further, making sure we stay in structure with that tailbone tucked underneath. Keeping the waist nice and even. Really feeling that twist through the upper body. Begin to make these a little bit smaller, not going quite as much. Returning to a slow, good. And then back to where we are simply shifting the weight back and forth again with the hips facing front. Come to a gentle stop and then go ahead and relax. Good. What I'd like you to do now um, is rub those hands together, just like we did before we did the Chinese cultural facial massage. Once again, we are accumulating this healing chi energy into the palms. And now what I would like you to do is take this energy, take the hands to the shoulders, kind of give yourself a hug and imagine healing and soothing those shoulders. They've probably gotten a little bit more of a workout this morning than they're used to. So really take this time to let this healing chi energy that you've accumulated sink into the shoulders. If you notice any buzzing, tingly sensations of heat, coolness, dropping down or relaxation, what you're feeling is your chi moving. Once those sensations dissipate, go ahead, step out of that. I am really briefly going to go over the Chinese cultural hand massage because again, I find these massages to be such a huge part of Tai Chi and also incredibly helpful for my clients. So what we're going to do is massage, use one hand to massage the other. So we're going to start by using the thumb of one hand. We rub once around towards the thumb and then towards the forefinger and middle finger and then the ring finger and pinky finger. And we're going to do that nine times. So if that was once, twice, three times, and so on until we get to nine. And then from the thumb, we're going to pull out. Same thing with the forefinger. From the middle finger onward, we push back in. And then go, ah, and take a second to notice how good the hand you massaged feels versus the one you have not. So let's show that other hand that same amount of love. So again, rubbing once around the thumb, then towards the forefinger and middle finger, and then the ring finger and pinky finger. We do that a total of nine times. Once you know this massage, you will be surprised by how fast you can do it and probably how often you do it. This is great for anyone that has arthritis or anything like that in their hands. And again, with the thumb, we pull out if you're wondering why we pull some fingers out and push the other ones in, it has to do both with tendon and ligament groups and also with the way chi flows. So from that middle finger on, we're pushing back in. And when I mentioned it has to do with the way chi flows, that again is that up the back and down the front. So if you imagine you're pulling the chi down and then pushing it back up. Okay. Um, the last thing I would like to do with everyone watching is simply to take a few more uh, deep breaths together and again really exemplify World Tai Chi Day, which is one world, one breath. So at hang, we're simply going to pull our stomachs in, take that nice healing air in, and as we exhale, exhale any negativity. So we will go ahead, three breaths all together. So. Hang, inhale, and ha, exhale. Hang, 
Aha. With this last breath, really breathing positivity out with it. Hang. Ha. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for quarantine World Tai Chi Day. I absolutely cannot wait to get back outside and celebrate uh, World Tai Chi Day the way it's meant to be, hopefully barefoot in the grass, surrounded by lovely friends, family, students, everyone practicing together. Until we can do that, um, this will have to be kind of enough. If you're interested in more World Tai Chi Day uh, today, I know the official um, worldtaichiday.org has a lot of goings on happening on their website if you just didn't get enough. I know what I'll be doing today. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Happy World Tai Chi Day. Thank you.